Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, Transformational Leadership, The Power of Meaningful Recognition. My name is Tom DeSantis from Laudio. We are healthcare's first transformational leadership platform developed to empower frontline managers. And I'm gonna be behind the scenes running the controls, so I wanted to let you know everyone is currently muted, but at any time, if you have a question, type it into the question box and we can answer them at the Q&A following the presentation. At this time, I want to introduce our two presenters. Tom Hill, Ladio's SVP, who works directly with health systems across the country to introduce them to the AI engagement technology that we've designed specifically for healthcare. Tom is going to review some of our research on nurse engagement and retention. Welcome, Tom. And Cindy uh, Sweeney, the Vice President for Nursing at the Daisy Foundation, who also works with health systems across the nation, celebrating the extraordinary performance of our nursing workforce. Welcome, Cindy. Thank you, Tom. So based on the size of our audience, we've got an exciting topic and a lot to cover today. We planned for 30 minutes of your time with about 30 slides. So Cindy, we're especially pleased to have you with us today. So please jump right in. Great, thank you. I am very happy to be here to share with you some perspectives and evidence on the importance of meaningful recognition as a tool for managers. First, let me share with you greetings from all at the DAISY Foundation. For those not familiar with our work, DAISY's mission is to say thank you to nurses, recognizing them in a meaningful way for their extraordinary compassionate care that they provide to others. Over 125,000 nurses have received the DAISY Award to date, and over 1.3 million nominations have been written on behalf of nurses. DAISY is now in 22 countries, which tells us that recognizing compassionate care has no geographic border. Co-founders Mark and Bonnie Barnes had hoped to be with us today, but they are representing DAISY at the International Council of Nurses Conference in Singapore as I speak. So let me start with a message from Bonnie to all of you in the audience. As you can see on the screen, Bonnie says, you as transformational leaders are the people who establish the environment where compassionate care thrives. And we at DAISY are truly grateful for all that you do to enable your staff to be the nurses that they were meant to be. So with that note, that positive note, I'm going to jump right into the presentation here. We know that as managers, you're very, very special leaders. Not only do you need to manage the day-to-day -day tasks to ensure high-quality care is delivered to your patients, but you must also be leaders, setting the example for those you're responsible for within your organization. In addition, managers are the fulcrum, balancing the expectations of senior leadership representing the organization and the staff who you're responsible for. It's a difficult and most important position to be in. It's loaded with opportunity when it's done right. Managers have the power to be transformational leaders given the right tools, the sense of confidence, to face the challenge of change which has become the healthcare landscape. This is one of my favorite quotes by Cruises and Posner in 2012. They wrote, change is the province of leaders, inspiring people to struggle against uncertain odds and persevere toward a misty image of a better future. The term transformational leader is often used in today's literature, but what does it really mean? Well, in research by Way et al. in 2018, they defined the characteristics of transformational leaders. So as you can see on the screen, facilitating social connections, promoting positivity, capitalizing on your nurse's strengths, nurturing nurse's growth, encouraging nurse's self-care, fostering mindfulness practices, and conveying altruism. And from my experience working with DAISY organizations, we know anecdotally, as well as based on the literature, that when leaders take the time to recognize their staff in a meaningful way, they are operationalizing the attributes of a transformational leader. In DAISY recognitions, compassionate care is celebrated by bringing staff together, very social, to recognize the individual and reading those stories, those nominations publicly. So looking at these attributes, you can see again how um, transformational leaders can use meaningful recognition to operation, operationalize their own role. So focusing on the positives, that's what it's all about, and it help, helps to um, allow the staff to articulate what's important to the group as a whole. 
So nurses who are recognized and valued by their leader, they're empowered with purpose. They are more resilient and enhance their performance with discretionary effort. Mary Beth Kingston, as the president of the Association of Nurse Leaders said, meaningful recognition is linked to a specific action and or achievements. Recognition and celebrations initiated by leaders are important. Promoting connections at work and learning about each other as individuals can improve well-being and foster day-to-day -day recognition on so many levels. I think we can all agree that there is a theme running through this and that meaningful recognition is important to transformational leader leadership. But really, what is meaningful recognition? This model demonstrates the relationship of meaningful recognition to healthcare organizations, to nurses, and most importantly, to the patients and families that nurses care for. The DAISY Award has been defined as a form of meaningful recognition. It has been used as a proxy in research examining the impacts of meaningful recognition. These three areas depicted in the model are the buckets of evidence supporting the use of meaningful recognition. Again, meaningful recognition is one of the foundational components of a healthy work environment. According to the American Association of Critical Care Nurses, the creation of healthy work environments is imperative to ensure patient safety, enhance staff recruitment and retention, and maintain an organization's financial viability. If organizations establish a healthy work environment, staff will flourish and will want to stay, while nurse recruiters will basically have an easier time bringing people, nurses, into the organization. This impacts the bottom line directly and indirectly. We know, for instance, based on research, the turnover of nurses can cost an organization anywhere from sixty dollars to $120,000 each time a nurse leaves, depending on the nurse's specialty. So my background is the operating room. So for instance, to replace a brand new operating room nurse with little experience, it's estimated to be $120,000. And that uh, accounts for lost time in OR cases that couldn't be done, time to orient, the preceptor having to be taken away from, um, from other work, recruiting time by those nurse recruiters, marketing, et cetera. And that's not to mention the cost when harm comes to a patient as a result of lagging care. So the healthy work environment demonstrates that all six of the components listed here are needed. As you can see, meaningful recognition is a part of a healthy work environment and probably one of the easiest and most cost-effective components to operationalize. Dr. Cindy Lefton, based on her 2012 research, defined meaningful recognition as a powerful form of positive feedback. Meaningful recognition acknowledges how a person's actions affect the life of another, it's relevant to the recipient, and it's equivalent to his or her contribution. The research supports that meaningful recognition mitigates the impacts of compassion fatigue by improving compassion satisfaction. Compassion satisfaction and compassion fatigue are a part of an individual's professional quality of life, according to STEM in 2010. In the act of caring, nurses will always be balancing compassion fatigue against their level of compassion satisfaction. Compassion fatigue is made up of burnout and secondary traumatic stress, as you can see in the slide. Secondary traumatic stress is when you as the care provider feels the emotional pain and suffering of your patient secondarily. Those of us who are nurses have had those experiences. For instance, when a young child is critically injured or suffering and you carry that pain and suffering of the child and their family with you. Like rocks in a rucksack, over time that backpack of pain and suffering that you carry will overpower your own ability to function. That combined with burnout, which is a sense of no longer emotionally caring, can add up. But when those moments of compassion satisfaction step in, the load can begin to balance. Moments such as watching young parents hold their baby for the first time, or as managers, when you see your new graduate nurse handle a situation based on some coaching you've done, that sense of pride and knowing that you impacted their lives is tremendous. So when compassion fatigue does take over, these are the things that can happen. 
as noted by a variety of researchers. Emotional distress, work days lost, a desire to quit, poor judgment, safety risks, apathy, a loss of empathy. But on the flip side, when compassion satisfaction is in place, these are the attributes that come into life. So what nurse would you like to have caring for your family members? What nurses would you like to have on your staff? This is your opportunity to help your nurses manage the stressors of their day by helping them to focus on the positive by meaningfully recognizing them for what they do. Kelly and Lefton in 2017 did a series of interviews of over 90 ICU nurses asking them what restored their emotional energy at work. These four buckets of themes emerged with quotes um, added here as examples. So positive feedback, the times that you get thanked stand out in your mind. Clinical outcomes, seeing a patient get better right before my eyes. Quality teamwork, knowing the people I work with have my back. Increasing one's self-awareness, recognizing that I'm affecting you more than I realize. Meaningful recognition is important as a tool for you as a transformational leader. So in these photos, you'll see to the left there, the nurse manager reads the nomination or the story. Can you imagine the feeling that that nurse manager has in reading this very positive story that happened on their unit about their staff member? So I think there's this wonderful positive flow within the individual receiving the recognition and the nurse manager delivering it. And then when you invite the nominator, whether it's a patient or another uh, staff nurse or a physician or whoever might have actually written that nomination up, that adds, again, that, that sense of positivity that flows through <clears throat> that team. And then inviting those in the C-suite, your chief nursing officer and others, to participate. That sends a wonderful message of how important these stories are, these, these positive moments. And finally, celebrating in the unit with the honorees peers. That in itself helps that unit to articulate and define what's important to them. So I always say you elevate and celebrate that which is important, and it really helps to define what this team is all about. But what about you? Do you put on your own oxygen mask first? In a study done by, uh, done by Press Ganey in 2017, responses to the subscales for eyes of the workforce, job enjoyment, and intent to stay from the NDNQI RN survey, which is given only to, rec to direct care nurses typically, were compared to responses by 195 high-performing nurse managers who agreed to participate in the study answering the same questions. They found that the difference in scores between the high-performing group of nurse managers and RNs on units managed by those high-performing nurse managers with respect to feeling appreciated and recognized and making a difference was significantly lower for no nurse managers. But their job enjoyment scores were high. Their intent to stay was much lower in comparison to the nurses that they led, 84% compared to 94%. So what does this tell you? That being meaningfully recognized is just as important to nurse managers, if not more so. I'm reminded of a DAISY nurse leader presentation that I attended just a few months ago. In this presentation, I accompanied the CNO and the chief medical officer along with the COO of the organization up to the unit. The nurse manager greeted us thinking one of his staff were about to be recognized. As he listened to the remarks, he smiled with the anticipation of which one of his staff would receive the recognition. When the CNO started reading the nomination from the patient and he realized it was written about him, you could see his face transform to this shocked, surprised, and overwhelmingly happy expression with tears in his eyes. The patient wrote about the nurse manager's impact on her care through the role modeling that he had provided to his staff by making rounds and keeping up with what was happening to her. It was a wonderful moment for all of us who witnessed it. Reading the story and hearing the impact that you make on the lives of others is transformational. There are thousands of stories that we have on the DAISY website, and these are just a few that you see on this slide. Quotes that 
talk about the impact on honorees, the nominees, the nominator, leadership, and DAISY committee members. If, for more quotes, you can always go to our website. And I think if you do, it's a great way to start your day in a very positive way. Now, according to Zwickel in 2016, he talked about meaningful recognition and, and what is it when you, you know, really look at it. And it's described as linking it to a specific accomplishment. It's delivered by someone important to the person who is receiving that recognition, and it's timely. So with that, I will turn this presentation over to Tom Hills of Laudio, who will share how the use of data and technology can capture the human experience and support meaningful recognition in your organization. Tom? So one of the things that Laudio does is we take the recognition and the concept of recognition that you've just talked about and explained the importance of. And this is one of our favorite quotes, great things are not done by impulse, but by a series of small things brought together. And that's what our platform does. But one of the things that we've done to build that platform is we've done some research on nurses specifically. This is one of the largest studies of its kind where we've looked at nurses, about 1,400, and looked at their turnover and we kind of back mapped to some of the situations that may have caused that turn turnover and the likelihood. So we've kind of bucketed into three groups, consistency, time, and responsibility. And our data kind of briefly touches upon those. So imagine if, I'll just jump right in. Here's some of the data. So for example, if you're with regards to consistency by the percentage of shifts, so if you're regularly working in the day and you're asked to work night shifts, there's a threshold, there's a benchmark of when you're more likely to turn over in that 20 to 30 percent time time frame. What about if you have coworkers that are floating in on shifts? Again, what happens more often, the more likely you are to leave. Same thing with percent of shift floating to other units, if that's something you're doing. You can see the variation in what happens. So imagine if you're a manager and you knew this, uh, much, much of this is actually unavoidable and it's part of the operations of, of the nursing unit. But imagine if you knew someone were doing that and you were in a timely manner alerted, um, that's what our AI technology does. And then you could actually go right in and somehow recognize them for taking that, that extra step and, and recognizing that you know what they're doing for you and for your unit. Again, we looked at things like time, the percentage of shifts where you worked on call, you can see the variation there the number of times you've worked more than 15 hours in a 24 hour window. As a nurse manager, do you wanna know that right away? Or is that something that you know, you're gonna ask at the exit interview, which you don't wanna do? Again, the number of times work 60 hours in a calendar week. And then responsibility. This was, we found really interesting when we looked at our data. So the number of shifts where someone is precepted and they're helping out in that capacity, wouldn't it be nice to thank them and let them know that you appreciate their effort? Again, shifts where they were in charge. And we, also, we have other data too of like, if you're the only experienced nurse on a shift um, and how often that happens and how that you know, can lead to your burnout. And then whether or not a charge nurse for the first time um, is working and how that can impact how likely they are to stay. So those are just some of the data points that we have in our benchmarking. And we have this on our website too, in our knowledge center, but we build that into the platform so people are able to kind of understand what's going on with their team, when they need to be recognized, and being recognized in a timely manner for what reasons. So one of the things that we believe is the intersection of all this, what you need to recognize, when you need to recognize it, and how you go about it, especially if you have the information on how certain nurses like to be recognized, whether it is a large, you know, daisy nomination, or if it's something really small and, and something, in, you know, you can find them on the floor and you have technology that tells, them, tells you that they're there. So Cindy, that's some of the things that we do at Laudio, where we take it, you know, those small steps that add it up, have great impact. Mm -hmm. And I would say too, you know, when you, you're able to track these things in the moment, especially those very positive moments, and you can give that feedback to somebody, you know, that's pretty powerful. And that starts to build toward that um, meaningful recognition when someone hears all these little different pieces that they've done or contributed to the work um, and the success of the unit that that leader can then say, hey, you know, thank you for pulling that extra shift or thank you for taking care of that really difficult patient, you know, when no one else was available. So I think all of that, um, when we can bring our, our technology together with our, again, our humanistic touch, I think we, um, we get the benefit of both. So today I, we've examined the power of meaningful recognition as a tool for nurse managers 
uh, better known as our transformational leaders, we've also shared the importance, I think, of recognizing our nurse leaders in a meaningful way, and how your actions impact those that follow you. And through the use of technology, these special stories and accomplishments can be captured and delivered in a form that is uh, positive feedback, and it's given in a timely fashion and can impact your work culture. So in closing, this comment, this quote from Sherwood, meaningful recognition is not a single event. It's, a, it's not a certificate of achievement. It's not a financial bonus, although all of those are great. But what meaningful recognition is, it's an ongoing process that should be a part of the work culture as nurses embrace the work culture together. Leaders and those that are led come together to really make that unit the best that it can be. So I want to thank you for your time, and I'll entertain any questions that might be out there. Excellent. Thank you, Cindy. We did have a couple of questions that came in, and one of the ones early on was, is this going to be recorded? And yes, I'm recording it, and we can make it available. It'll probably take uh, 48 hours, and we will have it on our website, but we'll also send it to you directly in case you want to share that or socialize it. The other question, there were two, and one of them was asked, I think, before you answered it, but it would be, it would be important to echo it because what we're talking about is something that's not just nice to have, but we believe it's a need to have. So someone wanted to know, is there evidence that this type of continuous activity has organizational impact? And I know you, obviously, that's in your theme. You can answer it on the, from the DAISY perspective, and mm -hmm. at the end, I can just jump in with a little bit um, from the lot of your perspective. Sure. Actually, there, um, there are a couple studies out there, and one that comes right to mind is um, a study that was done in 2017 by um, Kelly and Lefton, and they looked at ICU nurses in um, about 24 organizations across this country. And uh, what they were looking at or examining was the um, impacts of compassion fatigue and compassion satisfaction. And one of the characteristics they found was that nurses who had been recognized, and they used, this is one of the uh, situations where they use the DAISY Award as a proxy, nurses who have been recognized with the DAISY Award had a lower uh, score on compassion fatigue. Now, it wasn't just the nurses who had received the DAISY Award, but also those who had received a nomination. So I think it's really, really important when we talk about recognition, it's not, again, about necessarily the award itself, but just but being recognized. So nominations, those stories, those, those ongoing pieces are super important, and I think linking that to, to uh, organizational outcomes in the bigger picture, where you may see that the, the nurses who are recognized for these very positive um, situations, the things they do, you're gonna, you, you may find that they're the ones more likely to become certified, you know, that they have this professional trajectory. They're more likely to be retained. They have you know, less of a sense of burnout. So um, we have organizations that track these things, and they also are looking at things like, say, within the ICU. Do ICUs who recognize their nurses, are they more likely to receive the Beacon Award? Um, things like that. So I think that organizationally, um, you, can't, you can never link it to one single piece, such as recognition, but I think it's a compilation of all of the positive pieces that you can put together that you will get the organizational result. And again, if you can save one nurse from leaving an organization, a lot of money. You look at that money, but you also look at the opportunities for patient safety, too, in the bigger picture. Exactly. Um, and from the Lottie perspective, Tom Hill, are you able to jump back on? Yeah, I am awesome. back. Can you hear me? Why don't you tell us about like, what, we're do what we've done some research within our community um, and the results that we're kind of celebrating and about to publish? You know, we've actually been able to see that when we do enhance recognition, when nurse managers are recognizing their teams more frequently, the staff does notice, and it results in higher press gaining uh, staff satisfaction scores. It can also uh, result in significant reductions in turnover. So we've actually been able to see what research tells us happens with small teams um, when the technology is uh, able to develop capabilities that extend across teams of 100 to 150 to 200 people. Third question that came in, yeah, Cindy, you actually did answer this a little bit. What, what, again, why don't we echo it and underscore? So I thought Daisy just recognized nurses, but the quotes talked about leaders as well. Yes, so um, so the the Daisy Foundation um, has the Daisy Award, which is our flagship uh, recognition, and that's for the direct care nurse. 
But in addition, uh, we have the Daisy Nurse Leader Award. And that came to us from the Daisy community who really wanted to have a way to recognize their nurse leaders, those who actually make an environment, create the environment where compassionate care can thrive. So when you think about the Daisy Nurse Leader Award, it's really up to the organization how they use it. But um, I've seen it used to recognize um, preceptors. Um, sometimes those are your rising stars. They're, they're, they will be the, um, the leaders of tomorrow. I've seen it used for the CNO, I've, you know, managers. It's really about those individuals, nurse educators, it's a great example, folks who are behind the scenes creating this environment where compassionate practice can thrive. So yes, um, so there is a recognition for the, the leaders in healthcare organizations that are nurses. And I'm, this, this deck does have your references. Um, and you did mention your website, and as well, we'll, we'll put the audio up there because we have our research there in the Knowledge Center for folks. But that does bring us, that does conclude us. What, the, what other question was, in addition to, will this be recorded? Will the slides be available? I will make them available, so when you get our outreach, if you want the slides, just email me back, because if I send it to your, through your hospital system, a lot of times, obviously, they reject the large attachments. So, um, I will be glad to share those with you in a PDF form for you to share those if you don't want the recording. But with that being said, I just, Cindy, I really want to thank you. Um, it's been great working with you and kind of helping us, you know, set, set the stage for recognition and what that means to healthcare and how I think more and more organizations are really embracing this and mm -hmm. understanding its value and what it's doing, not only like for the bottom line and for nurses, but for patient safety and for the whole kind of patient experience. Um, so we thank you for bringing your perspective and, and, and actually your academic research that you brought in to support what we're doing. So we appreciate that. And Tom, thank you too uh, for providing those slides and the, and the, the research that, that Laudio has done. Quite welcome. I, I enjoyed it. And uh, again, if anyone has any questions, I'm more than happy um, to be available to answer questions specific to this area. Excellent. And for those of you that may have asked a question or two, um, we have documentation of that. And to, to take us to the, to the half hour. We will email you separately to make sure you have that answer. So without further ado, thank you very much, and we will talk to you later. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.